Panzerfausts were made in their tens of thousands. Uh, the, the production run may have even reached a million. Um, I can't remember exactly the production run of the Panzerfausts in their various types because there was loads of different types. Um, but the one that everybody would be more familiar with, the shape of the one that everyone's most familiar with, is the Type 60. And 60 because 60 stands for, I believe it's about... It's, it's either worked off armour penetration, 60 as in 60... Uh, I think it's either 60 millimetres or something like that, or 60 centimetres. If it's 60 centimetres, that would be incredibly impressive. Um, but I believe it's, it's probably based on the size of the warhead as to how much armour it will penetrate. Um, and they had an effective range of about up to 100 yards, 120 yards maybe on the outside. But a lot of the German troops, in particular the Fallschirmjäger, would have engaged uh, armoured targets at like maybe 50 yards, 40 yards. Um, so they were getting rather up close and personal with this. So that's the yellow, that's all the yellow we need. So we have the Panzerfaust and the helmet done. It's certainly going to bring them out a little bit and make them a, a bit more different looking. Uh, like I said, it's all about having fun. Absolutely all about having fun. Now we are going to use the dark grey now uh, for one or two little tiny bits before we continue on. So I'll just bring them back into the screen there. And there's a cap on the water bottle, which we're just going to paint that dark grey. Uh, let me just ease the paint in there. Being careful not to touch the black strap that we've already painted. And around the other side of the strap. And over the top of the water bottle there as well. We did touch the Panzerfaust a little bit with that. Um, again, I'm just going to take them off the stand so that I can get a, a good look in the areas that are going to be hard for me to reach under camera. So, the next thing I'm thinking of doing uh, is the, the darker browns. So we're going to be working on the darker browns on the rifle and on the water bottle. So for this we need another Vallejo colour. We're primarily using Vallejo and Tamiya in this one. We're using from their Panzer series 70822. This is German camouflage black brown. And this colour actually works very well for the, the wooden parts of the, the K98 as weapons were oiled and cleaned and oiled and grub, grubbiness and soil got onto them, they became a very dark brown. Um, so in this case, we're just going to do this K98 with this uh, really nice, rich, dark brown. And like I said, this is really pretty much a black brown. But suits a nicely used K98 rather well. Um, another good reference, of course, is Saving Private Ryan. If you want to watch through that movie and look at the, the German uniforms that are on display, you'll see loads of variation between kit, especially when you're watching the, the final battle uh, at the end of the movie. You're going to see guys wearing different helmets, uh, different headwear, uh, their side caps, ski caps, um, different colours of cloth for the uniforms. I'm just going to take them off the stand here while I talk to you. Um, so really, if you want to watch Saving Private Ryan and watch through Band of Brothers, anytime they get up close to some of the German soldiers, take note of the, of the types of uniform that they're wearing. Um, you're going to see loads of variation. And that's what's nice, that's what makes this the World War II genre such a rich and interesting subject to, to study and to look at. Um, because there is always variation on the standard. Um, you'll see in older war movies every German vehicle is painted grey, not so. Um, if, you're, if you ever watch A Bridge Too Far, the German vehicles of the time should really be in that more 
yellowy color that we've just painted our helmet and Panzerfaust in. So historical inaccuracies based on a fact that, well, no one's going to care at that point because no one was really that bothered about World War II when some of those movies were made. Um, you know, and it's sad because a lot of that information was lost or forgotten about for a long time. Uh, we're also going to paint the shovel cover, or the shovel handle, sorry, in the same dark brown. Any of this wooden stuff that's going to see constant use by the soldier, or is going to be worn constantly by the soldier, will pick up a similar amount of grub, grubbiness and muck uh, throughout its use. Again, we're maybe even, I'm just going to even put some into the white areas where the shovel's blade should be visible, just to make it look a little bit more mucky as well. Um, and we'll also do that water bottle there as well, as some of the, in some cases they were a, quite a dark, sort of woolly cover on them. Um, we're just going to paint that in as well. Again, being careful not to hit the strap. Like so, and then on the other side. But this is interesting because generally, I don't really get to paint World War World War Two models that often with Beasts of War. Um, and certainly never done a painting tutorial on World War II equipment. So, you guys that have been asking for extended history lessons, um, hopefully you are watching this and maybe picking up on a couple of things. Of course, he's, there's a lot of guys out there that are going to correct me. I think it's uh, Mauser, K98, I think that's your username. Fantastic wealth of knowledge. That user is great. Um, if you have any questions, certainly go his way. Um, he's... He's been constantly helping me out now and again uh, with a few things on the the channel. Um, while I note that, we just left out something that needs to be the darker grey. And that's the shirt uh, that he's wearing underneath that tunic. There's a, a field shirt which would have been the darker grey. Well, at least to begin with, maybe it would have faded over time. It probably would have faded over time. But if we can get that contrast in there for that, that piece of a uniform, so much the better. So we'll wash the brush off, and we have one more color we need to play with, and we're going to be painting the bread bag on his back there, which is still white, and we're going to be using Vallejo Panzer Aces 314 canvas. Now this is sort of a green tint. Um, when this is washed down, it'll probably turn out a similar color to the olive green. But why I'm using this is because the bread bag would have seen so much use, it would have faded a lot over time. It would have had liquid stored in it, stuff would have leaked out, it would have just been dragged through hedges. So anything that's had a high amount of wear will generally fade more uh, on the uniform. So I just bring them around so that I can actually see what I'm doing here. And hopefully he's in focus for you. Just apply that canvasy colour. So what I've said before, basically, very few pieces of kit were rarely the same colour, uh, particularly later in the war. Some uniform, some bits of kit would have been held by the soldier pretty much uh, for their entire career during, during the war. Um, some bits would have been replaced as they went to different theatre of operations. Uh, the Africa Corps, the soldiers that were in the Africa Corps would have had uniform changed from their, their tropical kit to regular Wehrmacht kit. Uh, anything like that really. And just a tiny little splodge up there as well. Just to denote how far the bread bag is going up. So if I put them back on the stand, you can see what we're trying to get out there with that piece of equipment. So I've also realized I've missed the back side of the shovel. Um, 
we're gonna have to just tap that in keep my head out of shot as well again I'll probably just take him back off the stand um, I know a few people have been saying that I've been missing bits on some models and yep I have and that was generally just to try and get the model painted for you guys just to show it but with this model having a particular interest to me I think it's really something that I should be showing you guys to be doing pretty properly so with all that done all that equipment is now sat and we're now ready to apply wash um, so once that paint is dry we'll then just take a bad black wash to that and we'll start to wash this model down so now with all of this paint pretty much set um, it's time to put our first wash down so our first wash is just going to be games workshops citadel bad black and we're just going to basically coat everything uh, well just pretty much everything I'd say uh, so we're just going to give it all a nice liberal coat here now on the uniform it's a, ni a nice quite a heavy coat um, because we need that that sky grey on the uni of the, the uniform to tone down to what we want it to be um, so we'll soon see how that turns out for us um, after we apply the black, we're going to try and avoid applying the black to the likes of the Panzerfaust and the helmet. What we're going to do with those is apply a Gryphone Sepia wash uh, to help tone those down. Um, just to help us along with the, the weathering of those particular pieces of the kit. And of course the other thing is we may need to do a second wash on this because the sky grey on the uniform is that light. Um, but again that's not a problem we're looking for the shading so we may need a couple of attempts at the shading to get it to where we want it to be we want to take it right the wash right down over the gaiters as well on the legs like so so we'll wash the brush off close our black and we're going to use gryphone sepia Citadel Gryphon CPA now on the helmet and on the Panzerfaust. Give that a good coat as well. So with the helmet because we're going to do a bit of camouflage on that we're going to give that that coat of sepia then we're going to add camouflage and then we're probably going to add a black wash to that uh, to try and tie it all in a bit more but for basic shading we're just going to apply that sepia to the helmet and let that settle down Like so. So now we're just going to leave that to dry. Um, once that's dry, we'll have a look and see what we think. If the uniform still looks a little too bright grey, we'll do another coat of black, but hopefully this should settle down quite well. So you can see now our black wash has dried. Um, the uniform is now nicely shaded. Um, it could possibly do with another coat if you want to make it a bit darker, but I quite like the, the contrast. You're still still able to pick out a lot of the details on the model. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to camouflage the helmet. And for that, we're resorting back to our Tamiya XF58 Olive Green. Um, as you can see, the wash has taken a little bit too heavily to that. So we're going to try and make a, a heavy camouflage pattern uh, apparent on it. So I'm going to use a... Yeah, I'll use a broadish brush. Um, the brush I've been using up to this point has been one of the Army Painter brushes, which is Hobby Highlighting. I'm moving on to a double zero brush, which is sort of a has a fuzzy tip on it. It hasn't really set that well. That'll be good for what we're doing. So I'll just stir what's in the, 
the pot lid a little bit. And we're just going to apply a few lines of camouflage to the helmet. So if I can get him a little bit better in focus for you. I'm just going to... few sort of splodges I think will probably do the trick after all this guy is in Normandy so he's going to be he will be talk, thinking about his camouflage patterns a lot uh, I'll be trying to blend in as much as they can So that'll do for that. We're probably going to add a brown in there as well. Um, so for that, we're going to resort back to our dark brown that we used on the rifle, um, which is the Vallejo Model Color Panzer Series 70822, and that is German Camouflage Black Brown. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that into my little pot. And using the same brush, we're just going to do a few dabs of this on the helmet as well. And then when we get a bit of a, either an, probably a, a black wash onto it this time when we do that, this camouflage pattern should fade in quite nicely. It's a different, it's, it makes a difference. It's something that's, uh, that was done in Normandy and, you know, wasn't completely specific to the Normandy campaign, but all these fancy camouflage patterns and creativity with helmet designs and colors really did sort of show up a lot in the Normandy campaign. So we'll rotate them around. So you can see if I can get them into focus, what sort of pattern that splotchiness has made. And you know, that's not bad. That'll look quite nice. So anyway, now with that done, we're gonna look towards uh, his face and his skin. So if I wash my brush off, I'm still dying with the cold by the way, folks. So if I, sound a little bit wheezy that's because of that um, for this one we're going to be using one of the flames of war paints uh, this is flat flesh this is a Vallejo paint 955 so just into the tub resort back to my hobby highlighting brush just to get the sharpness of the bristles and now we're just going to try and paint the skin So the guy, he is starting to come together a little bit. Uh, the more details we start to add now, with, especially with the skin tone, once we have the skin tones down, he'll start to really show a bit of character. Because up to this point, he's just a faceless grunt, and we can't have that. Every soldier in World War II was a person. Didn't matter what side you fought on. Just do under the chin. And we'll move on to the hands. In particular, I want to be careful around the binoculars.
So one thing I like about these new uh, Warlord German plastics is that, I'll take them off the, the stand here to get in around the hands, um, is the posability. Uh, the arms are very well laid out. Um, everything can be posed in a certain way if you want. Uh, you just have to look around the sprue, find the bits that you fancy, and see if you can make them work. And the way I did it was I clipped out all the arms, uh, took the tor took the body that I wanted, clipped out all the arms, clipped out the weapons I wanted them to be carrying, and just seen how things fitted. I initially wanted them holding the Panzerfaust, but I figured maybe that was a little awkward. So this sort of pose that we have here is pretty much what I settled on and it's not bad I I quite like that he's holding the K98 looking like he wants to set it down to use that Panzerfaust so um, well that's the the flesh tone that's the first layer of the flesh tone down um, what I'm going to do now is just touch up on the metal parts um, and I mean in particular along the rifle along the mast and all that and, and highlight some uh, paint chips paint scratches and, and that sort of thing so what we need this is another Flames of War paint, but this is all Vallejo. Uh, paint color 863, and this is just gunmetal grey. So it's a, a dark grey, but it's a metallic dark grey, obviously. Um, so we'll just take a little drop of that. <coughs> Excuse me. And all I'm going to do on the gun, we're just going to highlight little parts that should look metallic. So down along the very base of the rifle there's like a, a circular shape just, uh, touch that touch the edge of the bolt and the bolt mechanism a little bit around the trigger f mechanism and then as we go up the rifle we want to just touch corners little lines here and there just to define shapes just to to the fine parts of the rifle. Right up the top we'll do the muzzle. Do a little bit. Just tapping the metallic parts because you don't want to make the whole thing look like it's made of polished metal because they weren't. As simple as that, they weren't. Um, a lot of the rifles were purposefully blackened so that they wouldn't reflect a lot of light. Just part of the design. So that's a little bit of detail onto the rifle. We'll do the same to the binoculars as well here. And just touch little bits and pieces See on the center along each eyepiece. A bit there. Bit there, and a little bit along there. That's a bit too much. Just there as well. That should do for the binoculars. Um, also, around the edge of the helmet, we could probably do uh, a few bits and pieces of of paint chipping as well. So. I need to take some paint and the brush and I want to flatten the brush out and remove as much of the metal as I can and what I want to do is just well maybe not that much just tap the edges of the helmet so it has a more worn look to it let's do that a bit more Get a bit more paint on the brush. Just tap just bits and pieces. Just anywhere where there would be a high amount of wear. So it really does focus more on the edges of the helmet. <coughs> Excuse me. Move that more into the centre of the shot. And you just want to tap just the edges. If there's a little bit too much, you just wipe it down. Right, further around onto the back here. Now, Panzerfausts, mm, I wouldn't bother with the Panzerfausts. Most of them were, were handed out new 
on pretty much on the day they were used. So they pretty much came out of the crate and were then probably used later that day or stockpiled somewhere. So they wouldn't have seen a terrible amount of wear. So we're just going to leave that be to make it look a bit more new. Uh, the likes of the gas mask canister, definitely a few dabs along some of these higher edges. And a little bit on the shovel, just around the clasp of the, the bayonet. I know you didn't see that one, but... Um, and definitely around the mess tin. The mess tin is probably one of the most regularly used pieces of equipment that he's wearing next to the bread bag and the rifle. So just make sure it's got a fair bit of scratching to it. And if you were going to be really adventurous, you could probably al also try to simulate some burn marks on it from where they've been cooking their food on them.